All right, so this is the result of the tongue oil finish. As you can see, it's nice and shiny now. So the very last step, big step, of making the shaker is, of course, making the beaded netting. Um, so, again, you can choose any kind of string that you want, but this is nylon string, and the advantage of that is that you can burn the tips to keep it from unraveling, like this one is right now. Um, so, first step, you want to make a circle around the top of the gourd. You just want to take the string and let it rest loosely. You don't want it to be too tight, otherwise the beads won't make any rattling noise when you shake the gourd. So just let it rest gently on the shoulders. Give it a double knot here. And you can adjust the tightness a little bit. That seems pretty good. Tighten it up. Once you're sure the knot is pretty tight, you can go ahead and snip the ends. And then, to keep it from unraveling, go ahead and give the ends a burn. And as you can see, it has uh, melted just the slightest bit, and your knot is now firmly in place. Next, you want to cut a bunch of really long pieces of string, about two arm spans long each. These are really important um, because they are going to be holding the beads. These are the long strings that are going to hang down from that circle that we just made. And it's much, much better to be too long than too short, because if they're too short, we have to start all over, which would not be fun. So I am cutting about 20 of these. Again, twice the length of my arm span. Alright, I've finished. I've had about 20 different pieces of string cut, each about twice the length of my arm span. And I went ahead and uh, singed the tips a little bit to make sure that they don't unravel. Just make sure you don't burn yourself like I did. And it might also be smart to have a fire extinguisher on hand in case something really horrible happens. But let's hope not. So now we're going to see what we do with these strings. Go ahead and take the first one fold it in half so that the two ends are together and then you have one folded end like this. Now we're going to take the gourd we're going to take the folded end slide it under the circle that we made earlier and then put the two ends through the loop that it makes Once you pull it tight, it should look something like this. And what we're going to do is repeat the steps that we just took and make our way all the way around, spacing each knot here about one finger width apart. So let's go ahead and do another one. I'm taking a string, folding it in half so that the two ends meet. Good. Then I take the side with the loop, stick the loop under the circle, put the ends through, pull it tight. And it looks something like that. I'm going to space them just about this far around this far apart, and we're going to make our way all the way around. So here you can see I uh, made my way all the way around, counted them up and it looks like I have 18. 
So you want to try to space them evenly out. They slide back and forth and once they're about at the spacing you want, cinch them up really tight so that they kind of stick in place. And to keep them in place even more, we're going to give each knot an additional knot. So we're going to take this loop here, take both strings together and tie one knot and then push it up right against the knot that you just built. There, that'll keep it nice and secure and spaced the way we want it. We're going to repeat this all the way around our circle. sure you don't tighten it too quickly. So I've laid that second knot at every point. You can see I've spaced more or less evenly. And now it's time to really start thinking about our bead design around. Um, these 18 points are basically going to be our starting points to make a big net grid. And the grid is what we're going to lay our bead designs over. So let me explain what I mean. This is what um, we basically have right now to start. We have nodes at the top, which are the knots that we just tied, and each node has two strings coming from it. And we're going to make that into a grid by taking two adjacent ends and tying another knot with them. So by doing this all the way around and in multiple vertical levels, we end up with a big grid that looks something like this. And as you can see, you can put beads on this grid however you like. You can do something kind of like this, which is putting both of the two ends into one bead. Uh, you can do something like this, where each side, each leg of the thread goes through its own bead. Uh, this is something that's common to do closer to the top and the bottom, because uh, that's where the strings are closer together and when you get to the wider part of the body in the middle um, it's common to do this sort of thing so that you can fill in the gaps with more beads and make the design more uh, color dense. Uh, you could even do something like this where each leg of string has two beads so you really can do whatever you want. The design that I'm going to go for is basically something like this. Uh, if you remember, our colors were blue and teal and white. So I was going to have blue triangles with green diamonds in between, and the gap space was going to be uh, white beads. So taking a look at this design, I think about, okay, there are 18 points at the top, so how can I do this? Maybe five blue beads, one white, five blue, one white, five blue, one white, that adds up to 18. Uh, but you can think of whatever design you want and just make sure that the numbers work out. So I started to do a little bit more thinking about what this grid will look like. And uh, as you can see here, uh, I'm starting to plan what the grid is. Uh, up here, the first two rows, I've, I've planned just doing that single bead option where both legs of string go through one bead um, and getting closer to the fat part of the body I split uh, into each thread going through its own bead so I, I guess groups of two is how you can think of it and then closer to the bottom again I return to one single bead so anyway that's kind of confusing but it'll become more clear as we do it in actual life so uh, let's take a look at what this process is.